and we got there and the, the ride from you fly into Panama, Panama is a pretty good size, Panama City is a pretty good sized city. And they picked us up and they, they loaded us in these uh, uh, four wheelers basically and they were old, then they were real old. They got nice now, but they were real old. And uh, uh, well, no, wait a minute, that's back there where we did a jumper plane. That was a jumper plane, that was way back there, isn't it? They had jumper planes that flew in. And this little jumper plane, you sat with the, the pilots right here, and you're sitting in here, and 12 of you can get in this little jumper plane. And this little plane to get to the islands, because you're going over the you're going over the uh, uh, rainforest and over the mountain. And so it had to go out when you flew up in the airport, it went straight up, and then got over the mountain, and because the island was right down there, it had to go straight down. And you can imagine, every one of us felt like we were on a major roller coaster. And this plane is making all kinds of noises. It's not tight. It's old, 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 old. And I mean, looks like everything. And the, and the pilot keeps looking at us. And we think something's wrong. And some of the ladies are getting really scared. Because we don't know what's going on. And all of a sudden, we land this little small island. And the runway is, I mean, only about the length of our parking lot. And we're coming in like this on this plane. And this plane, when it hits, it goes down the runway, and he turns a sharp turn, and he does a donut like this. And that's how he stopped. And we just about lost it. We about lost it. And he told us we were going to go home that way. And a lot of times the planes didn't get off, and they ended up going off the end because they didn't get enough, uh, couldn't get enough runway to get out there. Now they've increased the runway, but that was one of the first things that we did. But we got there. I remember when we were going island to island, I'd never been to the islands, and the, the churches that they had, there wasn't really any buildings, and the buildings that they did have, wherever they were, were run down, and they really had great need, and we went to Artitupu, and that was the first place we went, and at Artitupu, we decided we were going to build a church and support a pastor there, and we did, we came back and raised the money and built a church on Artitupu, but we came back, and uh, I, we didn't even have a food minister really going, international food or anything, but God just began to speak to my heart over the night, and I, I talked to Pastor Nico, and I said to Pastor Nico, I said, I said I'd like to do a feeding. And uh, he said, what do you mean? I said, well, I don't know. I said, I'd just like to feed the island. I let them, I'd like to make an impact. And I said, I'd like to feed the island. I said, how much would it cost for us to feed this island? And he said, well, I think we can get the hog, and they had to butcher the hog. We can get the hog and the rice and everything, and cook it, and I said, probably, probably about $300 will feed the whole island. I said, well, I said, let's do it. And so from that point, they, they killed the hog that night. In fact, we can even hear the hog getting killed that night. I mean, it was pretty bad. And we could hear the hog, and they butchered the hog, and uh, they started cooking rice all night long. They got rice off the tree ships, and they cooked all night long. And word got out and ended up going to all the islands. And the next day, whenever it was getting close to time, Nico came up and he said, I just want to tell you, he said, said, the other chiefs on other islands have heard about this, and they want to know if they can come too, because most of them are planning on coming. I said, well, let them come. So we just, we bought more rice, and we did bought chickens off the trade ship. And before it was over, we had seven islands come, and seven chiefs came, and that was the first time that we were on the islands ministering to the Kuriyana Indian. But yet we didn't even know that God was going to put us in the food ministry and the food would have that kind of impact. I want to tell you what I found. Food is an impact. Whoever controls the resource of food in a nation basically becomes the one that controls the nation because people are going to eat. Come on, people are going to eat. And so therefore when God becomes Jehovah Jireh of the nation, people come. And we watched that and we've gone to different, different countries and we've brought food into the country. We've watched the real power of the communication of God's love through meeting the human need that people have. And we watched them come and be acceptable to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now since that time we've built seven churches. We've built a warehouse. Amen. We've built a warehouse there and a building there. Missions quarters. And uh, now we're helping to build even more as we continue to network with Alan and Kathy Simpson and floating Bible schools and living waters 
and the church there, Word of Life Church, amen, Pastor uh, Jamie now that's pastor there, amen, we're networking with him and trying to reach into those communities and bring more islands and more churches. We've opened a couple more churches up and we're believing to continue to impact their life. In fact, we have a container of food we've already brought into Broken Arrow and we're getting ready to send a container of food to the Kuti Ala Indians, Amen. praise the Lord. And we're still believing in God that someday we're going to get the whole container to the island instead of having to go to Panama City and pay basically jumper, jumper uh, uh, RVs, it's not RVs, but uh, four-wheel drives to go across the jungle and be able to get it there, box, really about 40 boxes at a time. And we really need to make an impact there. Amen. Amen. Have y'all come to the power of agreement with that? Amen. Amen. Have y'all enjoyed these videos? Amen. Amen. Showing you what we're doing and the impact that we've made in these nations. And we continue to increase the amount of help that we give them. Uh, and I believe that many, many people in this room today have been, been impacted by the mission trip to the Kuniyala Indians. And they impacted them. I know you've been there. Amen. That they have impacted their life and God has done something special. Amen. Amen. So God is with us. Why do we do what we do? Love. Why do we do what we do? Love. Love. Amen. You want to check see if that's certain? Amen. Amen. The reason why... What's wrong? The reason why we do what we do is because God loved us. Amen. And that we want to give back to God and we want to give back to Him in the same manner that he gave to us. Amen. In fact, we find in, in the God's unfailing love. I love this little little, uh, uh, little uh, picture that I got here. Because I think about the unfailing love of God that I didn't deserve to be saved. I mean, y'all deserve to be saved. I didn't deserve what God did for me in my life. But yet God did it anyway. Because he's consistent to always do what his nature is. Amen. And then how many you know that God is wanting to transform us into the image of his son? Amen. We've already been born again. But there's a transformation being in place. He said, let this word be in you that was in Jesus. What else? That you might be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you might prove what is the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. That means that God wants me to grow to the fullness of the stature of God. But there's only one way for me to grow in God. I've got to grow in love. Amen. Because everything in God is about love. In fact, he said, if you have if you have all the gifts of the Spirit, but you have not love, it profits you nothing. Amen. But we know how much God loves us. Why? Because of John 3, 16 and 17, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through the world, through him, it might be saved. Amen. So God came not to condemn us, but he came to save us. Amen. Are you glad that God's not against you, but he's for you? Amen. That God wants your dream and your vision to become a reality. He wants the things. In fact, those things, the Bible said, when you pray those things you desire, when you pray, believe, and you shall receive them. That God knows what you desire in your life. And that God wants to help you to find that treasure in your life. He said, I've hidden these treasures in these earthly vessels. That means there's something in the inside of us that is speaking to us. You see, I believe the Holy Spirit lives in me. When I got born again, I became a new creature in Christ Jesus. I didn't get born again of flesh and blood, but I got born again of the Spirit. And that spirit now lives in me and abides in me, and he's speaking to me. Amen. Yeah. He wants to lead me, and he wants to guide me, that I might live the fullness of life that God has for me. You see, Jesus, when he died on the cross, he told him, go to Jerusalem and tarry, for the Holy Spirit would come. And when the Holy Spirit came, we find in John, he will not speak of himself, but he'll speak of God. In fact, we find when Jesus goes away, he said, he said don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I'd have told you so. But I go away to prepare a place for you that where I am, you can be also. So we know that God has a plan. Come on, everybody say, God has a plan for me. Amen. And it's a good plan. 
It's a plan that I might have the good things of God on this earth. He's blessed me with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That I might find the treasures of God in this life. Because this world is a place that we can find the goodness of God. There's nothing like getting up in the morning. Amen. And seeing the, seeing the sun as it rises. And seeing everything begin to wake up. There's nothing like when you're going to bed to see the sunset going down and see the closing of everything. Every day, God opens the world and He closes the world. I'm going to praise the Lord. He's got the whole world in His hands. Amen. And the balance of it, we never have to worry about it because God always, every day the sun comes up and every day the sun goes down. Every day you get up and there's a breath of fresh air for you. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And I say to you that God is speaking to us through his word. Amen. He said heaven and earth will pass away. But now my word will never pass away. Amen. That word is where in you. Amen. Jesus in you. The hope of glory. So the word of God is speaking to us. In fact we find in 1 John. Amen. 4, 7 through 12. It said beloved. Let us love one another, for love is God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. 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 For God is love. Amen. Let's just stop right there. Amen. In this love of God was manifest towards us, that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a preparation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Amen. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love has been perfected in us. Amen. So I think the key words of this beginning of the scripture is that love us. I mean, oh, God wants us to be partakers of that divine nature. Amen. He wants us not to just talk about loving people, but he wants us to actually love people. He wants us to be a partaker. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. So we find that love is a commitment. Praise the Lord. It's a commitment to join the team. It's a commitment to do something beyond just talking about it or coming to church about it. But it's about taking it to the world and letting the world see how much God loved us and how much he wants to give to us. Amen. And how much he wants us to cherish those things that he gave to us. That God loved us and committed himself to us when we didn't deserve it. How many know that? You didn't deserve what God gave you, but God gave it to you anyway. In the same way, God wants us to love people unconditionally. Praise the Lord. He wants us to reach out to people regardless of what they wear, regardless of what their hair looks like, regardless of where they're running around. He wants us to love them no matter what nation they come from, whether they talk our language or they don't talk our language. He wants us to get out of our box Amen. And start doing what God did. Amen. How many know? He came here. Amen. He didn't want to, but he came here because he was committed that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The word of God is speaking to us. And God is speaking to us in this generation. I believe to get out of the box or get out of the boat. It's time for us to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. Amen. It's time for us to be partakers of that divine nation. And I'm telling you, that nature of God is God is love. Praise amen. the Lord. And love, amen, is a very, very powerful tool. Because when you love someone, as I said earlier today, tonight, amen, when you love someone, you don't think about the cost. You don't think about what you gave up. You just do it because you've gotten crazy. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because you simply want to get somebody you love because you're not thinking about yourself. All you can think about is them. I'll never forget when my wife and I, when we fell in love, I want to tell you, sleep was no problem. Because at night, 
I'd go to bed and I'd have the phone and she'd be on the other end and we'd fall asleep talking all night long. And she couldn't shut me up and I couldn't shut her up. Because all we can talk about is the future. Praise the Lord. All we can talk about is how wonderful it was to be in love. And I'm going to tell you, it's a wonderful thing to be in love with God. Amen. Because when love begins to fill your heart, misery and pain and evilness begins to go out and the cleanness of God begins to come in and all of a sudden there begins a smile where there is a frown for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. Since God loved us that way. Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Jesus said unto him, You shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second commandment is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, I hang all the law and all the word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Amen. Upon this, God loves you and God loves humanity. Amen. Love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Amen. And love your brother as yourself. Amen. Give to your neighbor because, you see, without showing the love of God to people, they'll never know that God is alive. They cannot see him. If they're going to see God, they're going to have to see him in you. If they're going to hear God, they're going to have to hear him from you. If they're going to have a relationship with God, they're going to have to have a relationship to you, bringing them and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible said you're known by the blood of the Lamb and the word of of your testimony. Amen. How many of y'all have ever witnessed to somebody about your testimony and seen them come to the knowledge that Jesus is Lord? Amen. Amen. That love that fills them, but that love that fills you as you share what God has given to you. As we begin to share the love of God with people, we'll forget about what's going on here. We'll forget about what's going on in our personal life. And we'll quit looking at what we don't have and we'll start appreciating what we do have. Because love forgets the pain and love doesn't want to do anything but be what God has called it to be. Amen. He said to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your mind. Now you got to remember this. This is not a choice. This is a commandment to you and I. Amen. That if we want to fulfill what God sent his son to do in our life, we have to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul and we have to love our brother as I said. It's not a choice. That's the reason why in the last scripture he said, let us be partakers of that divine nature. And I love that because it's not singular, it's plural. It's not the pastor's job. It's not the kid children's pastor's job. It's not the youth pastor's job. Everybody say, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. How many of y'all are believers? Yeah. Amen. Amen. They will cast out devils. They'll lay hands in the sick. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he said, as they do that, God will work with them. Mark 16. God will work with them with signs, wonders, and miracles. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready for something new to happen in your life? Amen. You see, to get something new, you've got to give, and it shall be given to you. You've got to learn that God's loved the world, and you've got to give because they don't deserve it. You got to simply give to them because God gave to you. You got to be committed. Romans 8 31 through 39. How is God committed to this? Romans 8 31 39. When they will say to these things, If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, and it is God who condemns. It is Christ who died, and furthermore has been also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, or persecution, famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. 
we are counted as sheep to the slaughter. But he says, Nay, yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor present things, or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. How committed is God to you? He said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, all the way to the end. God wasn't just committed to save you. He's committed to finish what he started in you. Amen. And there is no death. There is no cost. There is nothing that shall separate you from the love of God. I don't care what you do. God's going to come after you because God loves you. Are you here? You're a child and he loves you like a child. Yes, he'll correct you, but he wants you to know that there's no good thing that God will withhold from them that love him, that are called according to his purpose and plan. But we've got to learn to abide in that promise. I learned to abide in that word. Amen. Because that word in us is more than enough to fulfill every desire that we have in our heart and able to make us more than conquerors. Amen. How committed are you to the cause of Christ? Amen. How far is this commitment or this love of God go? Okay, let's go to Romans 5, 6 to 11. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. Do it again, Doug. Died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will not die, yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were recounseled to God through the death of his son, much more having been recounseled, we shall be saved from this life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom he hath now received reconciliation to God. He did it through demonstration. Praise the Lord. You can't tell somebody you love them. you got to show somebody you love them. you got to step out of your box. It's going to cost you some time because there is a cost. There is a sacrifice to loving someone. Loving someone means I give up something to give to someone else. Somebody asked me, why do you feed the nation? Why do you spend so much energy? Why do you spend all your personal fighting? Why are you so committed to that? Because God called me and saved me when I was yet in sin. I get back to him and the only way I know to give it, he said, when you've done it in the least of one of them, you've done it unto me. Until we learn as a church to love people, regardless of where they're at, we're never going to be able to reach them, but nothing going to say, but they're going to call us, bringing condemnation on them instead of bringing the love of God to them. It's time to love people right where they're at and tell them that God cares about them and he wants a change in their life. Are you hearing me today? God wants you and I to step out of the boat. It is time for us to dedicate ourselves unto him. Why? Because God loved us. I've been commanded to step out of the boat. I've been commanded to go into all the world and preach this gospel to every creature, making disciples of them. This is not a choice. This is a command from God. Loving God with all my heart, mind, and soul, and loving people as he loved me. Amen. It's myself. What are the attributes of love? Let's look at the price that Jesus prayed and what things that God is expecting out of you and I. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, love suffers long and is kind. Woo! I mean, you know, gentle, kindness, long suffering, meekness, gentleness. Those are the attributes of the personality of God's Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. The fruits of the Spirit. And we find that love suffers long and it is kind. So what it means is that even when I suffer, I'm still forgiven. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, that's hard. Come on, that's hard. That's hard. In fact, we find in Mark, it's when you have faith in God in Mark 11, 22. You expect to the mountain, the mountain being moved, and then we find the scripture 24. It said, those things you desire when you pray, believe, and you shall have it. But we get the rest of it, it says, but if you have all against your brother, Leave your gift at the altar because think not that you will receive anything from God till you get your relationship right. Amen. 
Oh, praise the Lord. So see, if I want something from God, I got to get my relationship right. And understand this. I got to get my relationship right with you. You see, it's easy for us to love God because we don't see God. There's nothing that I have somebody telling me that I have to do. But yet in my life, I have many people that are drawing on me. Come on, praise the Lord. That I'm having, having to give sacrifice to. That in my mind, I'm saying they don't deserve my time. Praise the Lord. And I'm not going to do it. Come on. But Jesus said, long suffering says, I will be kind and love does not envy and love does not pray to self. It is not puffed up, does not have, is not have behave rudely, does not seek its own, does not provoke or thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes and hopes in all things, endures in all things. Love never fails, but wherever there are prophecies, they will fail, whether they are tongues or they will cease, whether they are knowledge, it will all vanish away if you have not love, what profit you? If you gain everything in this world, but you haven't ever learned how to walk in love. I'm going to tell you, we have too many people that are having to take pills to go to bed and pills to get up. We have too many people that they're saying are emotionally unstable and having to give pills to get their saying because they tell you, you have a chemical imbalance. You don't have a chemical imbalance. You have an emotional imbalance because your emotions in the inside are being dictated by the pain and the hurt. That's the reason why Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light and I'll no way cast you away. Come to me all you to heaven laden for that yoke disease. What is he saying? Come to my house and I'll love you. And in the midst of my love, I'll bear your sins and I'll bear the things that you've been carrying and I'll give you peace and I'll give you joy and I'll be long-suffering and I'll be gentle and I'll be kind to you. I'll nurture you like a hen down to the flock and I'll show you the great and mighty thing that I have for you. Every time I come to God and I speak to God, God doesn't condemn me. God begins to lift me up and tell me I've got something better for you. I've got something new for you today. All you got to do is get out of the boat because I'll be with you and don't worry and I'll have the spirit of fear because I'm not giving you that spirit but I'm giving you a spirit of power, love and a sound mind. You see in the midst of this world of hate we've got to learn how to love people and to love God. Amen. By reaching out with compassion Bible says in Matthew that Jesus went everywhere preaching, teaching, and healing all those that were oppressed of the enemy. Oppression is grasping our society. It's stealing the future of our young generation. They're living without hope, without faith to believe there's something better tomorrow because they've been stuck in a rut because they watch you and I walk in a rut. And the only way they're going to get out of it is we've got to learn to love them with long suffering. We've got to learn how to endure the hardship and overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. It's time for you and I to love people and to love God. See, as Christians, what is our goal? My goal is this, Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ from the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to his riches and glory, to be strengthened with might through the Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height, to know the love of Christ, which passes the knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So we read one scripture that said that God loves me and there's nothing that can separate me from God. No depth, no height, no principality, no power, no dominion. Nothing can keep God from coming after me and loving me. And then we read here that Paul is praying and saying to the church, I pray that your understanding, that you have 
become a partaker of this divine nature and that God would open the eyes of your understanding that you might know him in the power of his resurrection, that you might know him in the love of God because love never fails. Love always wins. Love will always get you through. Love will always pick you up. God will always comfort you and always shadow you and it'll always be what you need in the middle of the storm in the middle of the battle. Church, we've got to learn how to abide in his love. We've got to learn how to walk in his love. By doing what? By letting this transformation take place. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The Bible said, I'm washed by the water of the word. So I've got to allow the word of God. How did you get saved? Amen. He said, the word is now you even at your mouth. What is it? The word of faith to save your soul. That means that that word is already in you. If you're born again, God is with you. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And God wants to take the old things and make them pass away. And behold, behold, things become new. How is he going to do that? The transitioning in the inside will take care of what's getting ready to happen on the outside. When you begin to love the depth and the breadth and the height of God's love, you know that no weapon formed against you will prosper. That greater is he that's in you. Amen. The him that's in the world. That you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. That you're the head and not the tail. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. Why? Because God's not forgotten you. But God's going to cause you to triumph right where you're at. In fact, verse 3 the mention, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God wants to fill you to the max. Amen. He wants you to know him and the power of his resurrection. So this morning, I'm praying with you. What is our prayer this morning? Our prayer this morning is Ephesians. Amen. Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. Therefore, let me see if I can get there. Uh, jumping all over the place, Brother Doug. I'm sorry, guys. I'll just read from here, okay? Yeah. Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. Therefore, I also pray your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for the love of the saints. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Okay, you got there. Thank you. That the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge of him. That your eyes of understanding might be enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of his glory as an inheritance in saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believed according to the working of his mighty power. Which he worked with Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above principalities, power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age which is to come. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over the church, which is the body of the fullness of him in it all. Amen. So what is he saying to you and I? He's saying, I desire that your eyes be open to what happened the day you got born again. That you understand the ultimate price that was paid for your salvation. And that you understand how much God loved you to give his only begotten son and to die on that cross. And how much he cares about you that he's willing to go to the cross and bear your infirmities and bear your sickness and what his face could not even tell who he was and was led like a sheep in the slaughter but he said not a word because God valued you so much that he was committed so much when he could have called 10,000 angels when the devil tempted him but yet he suffered and when he was in the garden and his tears were turning to blood he picked up his shoulders and said, God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And began to fulfill the covenant that God gave him. I'm telling you, no greater thing than you could do than to lay down your life for the cause of Christ and pick up your cross and follow him. And start letting people know that God loves them, that he cares about them where that we're going to do it through the demonstration of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the love of of God. Are you hearing me? Yeah. The love of God is the power of God. And when you love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, there is nothing that you can't accomplish because if God be for you, who can be against you? 
So this morning, the question is, for you out there that are watching this morning, the question is, are you willing to love God with all your heart and mind and soul? Are you ready to make that commitment? The Bible says the word is nigh you. It's even at your mouth. It's the word of faith that will save your soul. You're one step away from a breakthrough. You're one step away from a miracle. All you've got to do is say, God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that he gave his only son for me that I might have life and more abundantly. I believe that right now, through the confession of faith and the confession of the, my confession of faith and the word of God that's been preached, that I am saved and I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. This morning, you're in here and God is with you. God wants you to know that he cares about what's going on in your life. And the enemy, he wants to tell you this. You're insignificant. You have no value. That God doesn't really concern about you. He's not concerned about what's going on in your life. He's not concerned about your job. He's not concerned about your children. I'm going to tell you something this morning. That's a lie from the devil. Because God cares about everything that's going on in your life. And that God wants you to know, I've made a way for you. I've made a way for you. You don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Did you stop that? I'm sorry. I have to keep talking. 